Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is day 8 of my 15 days of Python series. In today's video, we're going to be covering one core aspect of Python. One of the things that make Python actually very, very widely used is the loops. Let's say you have 1000 email addresses and you have to send customized emails to these email addresses. It's going to be quite a task to compose each email for all of these email addresses. And you send to the first one, add the second one, and you put the third one until you get to 1000. But the beautiful thing about programming and programming languages like Python is that you could use loop to iterate over different variables within your emails and you can actually automate this and make it repeated. In this video, we're first going to understand how you can use the for and the while loops. Also going to look in at learning about nested loops. And we're going to be using break and continue statement to control loop execution. And finally, just like we've been doing in all of our videos, we're going to be doing hands-on examples. And at the end, we're going to be having an exercise that I would want to attempt and after that, I'm going to be doing the exercise here just for you to use as correction and not necessarily for you to use mine to do your own exercise. The first is loops. Loops are used to repeatedly execute a block of code as long as the condition is met, which is what I've explained. What Python does is that it supports two main types of loops. The first is the for loop and also the while loop. These are the two main kind of loops that Python supports. The for loop is used to iterate over a sequence, such as you have list, we've talked about list, you have the tuple, you have dictionary, you have set, you have string, you could go over, go over a string of text and execute a block of code for each item in the sequence. Let's look at the first example we have here. The first example here is a list. We said the fruit is apple, banana, sherry, and we can use the for loop. And the for loop, we say, for fruit in fruits, we're going to print each of the fruits and it's just going to print everything. It looks very simple here, but you could have more complicated use cases where you need to go over a large amount of data. And like I've said before, this fruit could be anything. You could use for I in fruit, you could use for A in fruit. It could just be anything. Um, but here I'm using for fruit in fruit. You print fruit and it's going to print everything. The second example is for I in range, the range of five between um, one to five. Obviously, when you use range, it's not going to print 5. So the way it works is going to take it from 0 to 4, which is 5 when you count them. But in terms of numerically, it's not it's not 5. So it's going to generate numbers from 0 to 4. And the while loop. The while loop executes a block of code as long as a condition is true. It's quite different from the for loop because the for loop just iterates over a list, a set, a tuple. Um, but the while loop, looks for conditions as long as the condition is true is going to execute the block of code but once once the condition becomes false it's just going to break i have an example here we have i is equal to zero now the condition because the while loop always works with condition the condition is while i is less than five as long as this is true we can keep printing and executing all of this and we're going to be putting um, a calculation here to say increment by one to avoid an infinite loop. So what we are doing is while i is less than five, i starts by being a zero, and this is where we increment the value of i. i is going to be equal to i plus one. It goes over again, it comes i, i becomes one. It goes over, it's going to be i is equal to one plus one, i becomes two. It goes over again and say i is going to be 2 plus 1, i becomes 3. It goes over i until you get to i is 5. The moment i becomes 5, it's going to exit the loop because the condition has been met. So as long as the condition remains valid, you are going to have this loop running. But once the condition is met, it's just going to exit that loop. And that's the difference between the while loop and the for loop. We can also have nested loop just like we have nested conditions and everything we have within nesting. You can nest loops inside each other to create more complex iterations because there are several use cases that will have a bit more complicated iterations that you want to do and a, just a regular loop is not going to suffice, but nested loops are going to cut it. So here we have example of nested loops. We have for i in range of three. Range of three means you're going to have zero to two. A start here and it comes into the next loop. It looks at for j in range of 2 and you're going to print i. So it starts here for i in range of 3 and you go to the nested loop and once it comes to i, it's going to print i first 
once it prints i let's say i is zero it prints i and it's not going to go down and say for j in range of two it's going to execute everything within j in this loop it goes once it goes again if this is 10 it keeps going until it executes all of the values in j and print everything in j then it goes back to the second value in this range which is one it comes back it runs j runs everything in j for the range of two it goes back and picks two and comes back i becomes two once i becomes two it runs the range of two again within j and print everything in this nested loop what happens is that the nested loop will always run the multiple time based on um, the range that you have for each time the main loop runs so if the main loop runs once the nested loop is going to run all of the iterations that you have within the nested loop and you go back to the main loop to run once and the nested loop is going to run for all of the conditions that are set in the nested loop and that is how the nested works you can also have situations where you might need to use the break and continue statement um, they look similar but they are quite different in the application because the break statement is used to exit a loop prematurely um, the moment a condition is met uh, why the continue statement is used to skip the rest of the code inside the loop for the current iteration and move to the next iteration and let's say you have another iteration you have another condition another loop or another condition that you have set and it, it just it just continues to the next and um, but if you don't if you don't have it's just going to print the last value that you have i have a condition i have a loop the loop says for i in range of five if i is equal to three the moment you're running the loop and you get to the point where i is equal to three you just break and the break exit when i is equal to three the second one is if i in range five the moment i is equal to three you continue you skip the iteration when i is three and if there's any other condition that you have here any other iteration it just moves over to the next unlike this one this one breaks and every other thing it becomes irrelevant and um, but in this case where you have continue it moves over to the next condition or the next iteration that you have um, in the subsequent block of code with all of these that we have looked at with all of this that we have learned let's see how we can do an example and i believe and i believe that an example is going to provide more context and help you to understand this much more better so in this example we are going to take the sum of first n natural numbers how do we do this let's go back to our environment i've created my day eight and i've created my example one i call this sum of first n natural numbers and what we're doing here is to tell the user to give us a number you pick up a number and we are going to take the sum of all of the numbers that lead up to that number so if you provide a number let's say you provide three the loop iterates from one to three adding each number to total and um, let's see how we can do that here I'm going to say n, n is the number that you're providing and I'm going to ask the user to impute, impute but before then let's call, let's say we want integers and ask them to impute, enter a positive integer and the total I'm going to just give it as zero. Now for i in range, range of one, two, between one to the number you have provided n however but because this n is going to be um because when you're using range range is not going to lead up to the number if you provide range of three it's not going to give you three it's going to stop at two um to cater for that i'm going to be saying n plus one for i in range of one to the number that you have provided is equal to total is going to be equal to total plus i and um, but to make it simpler i'm just going to say plus or equal to i and when we are done we come out of the loop and we're going to print sum of sum of first n n is the number that you've provided natural numbers is is going to be the total so let's see this and i'm going to enter this and i'm going to start from two of course we know what this should be because it's quite simple and sum of first two natural numbers is three because you have one is that from one to two one plus two is three if i'm to use three what is going to be is going to be one plus two which is three and three plus three should be six and it tells me that this is six so you can use this to take the sum of the first n natural numbers 
provided. The second example is going to be taking factorial of a number. So essentially, the factorial of a number is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. Um, the n become, be, being the number that you have provided in this case is 5. So let's go to back to our code and see how we can create that for factor of numbers. I'm going to be creating my example 2 here. So I call this factorial of numbers. For the first thing, we are going to ask the user to impute the, the particular number that they want to take the factorial of. And I'm going to say n integer input. I'm going to tell the user to enter a positive integer, which is going to be the n value. And to start with, I'm going to say factorial is equal to 1. Then we write our loop statement for i in range in the particular range that was provided, um, I've explained this, n plus 1. The factorial is going to be factorial plus, the factorial should be factorial times i. But another way of writing this to make it very easy, I could just put this here and take this away. So it's going to be factorial times i i being each of the different numbers within the range that was provided. If the number is 5, it's going to be the range between 1 to 5 and i is going to be each of the elements within that particular range. And I'm going to be multiplying them just like we have for factorial. And when I'm done, I can print everything out. I'm going to say factorial of n is a factorial. Let me run this and let me put it's very easy because the one for three is going to be three times two times one, which is six. The factorial of three is six. And if I put five, and we should get 120 and it goes on and on. For our exercise, what we're going to be doing in the exercise is to write a Python script that takes a list of numbers from the users and print the largest and smallest numbers in the list. Um, which should be very, very simple um, if you have been following all we've been doing. I would like you to try this on your own and I'm going to be working on it as well and use mine as correction not to do your own exercise. And when you're done with that, you can join me in our environment. I'll create this and call it exercise one. So I'm just going to have this, say, taking a list of numbers as input from the user. That's what we're going to be doing. The first is to create the input. And the input, the variable is going to be numbers. And we're just going to be asking the users to enter numbers separated by spaces. So we'll ask the user to enter numbers separated by spaces. And we're going to be splitting the numbers. After that, I'm just going to be converting each of these numbers after the split. I'm going to be converting them into integers and for each number that were provided within the numbers that the user has given to us we're going to be converting them to integers after that i'm just going to set these um, variables for largest numbers and smallest numbers the largest number is going to be the first within the index and also set the smallest number to be the first within the index and we'll see what we can do around this and just play around it using the for loop so what i'm going to do is for number in numbers um, that is here for each of the number within the numbers, if number is greater than the largest, then the largest is equal to that particular number and we'll change the value of the variable. So what we'll be doing is if the number for any number, if the number in these numbers are greater than the largest and then the largest is equal to the number and we go back again, check the next number. So what we are doing here is to say the largest is equal to the first number. And when we come to this place, we'll pick the f any number, we'll try the first number to say if the number is greater than the first number here, then the largest is equal to that number. Then we go back again to iterate, pick a second number, we'll add, look at the condition, is this number greater than the value that has been set for the largest? If it is true, then the largest becomes that number. It goes again, takes another number and asks the question, is the number that we took greater than the largest um, which has gotten a new value if it is no it leaves that and goes back again the same thing applies to the smallest number so it just picks a number when it picks the number it looks at the condition is it the same or greater than the new value that has been assigned to the largest if it's not it 
just leaves it but if it is it now assigns that new number to our largest number and it could just iterate over that and when we are done we can now print we can print the largest number and we can print what the smallest number is let me run this and the instruction is to enter numbers separated by spaces i'm going to do um three five two seven nine um two so what's going to happen is going to pick three and see if three is greater than the first number which is three if it if it is um it's going to assign this new number to it if it is not it just goes over it over and over again until you get to the final one so let me run this the largest number is nine and the smallest number is two and you can do this for any sequence you want to put in there and i hope that you are able to try this on your own and have the examples please like and subscribe to my youtube channel so that others can have access to this material and also support the work we do and just motivate me to do more of these videos and i know i'm going to see you in the day nine of our 15 days of python see you in my next video bye for now